Welcome back, everybody. This is the Dumpster Fire Project, a podcast that follows the entrepreneurial journey. Entrepreneurial journey? <laughs> Two middle aged men, Murray and myself. I'm Eric Scramlin. That is the legendary podcast host, Murray Swash. How are you, Murray? I'm good. How are you? Doing fantastic. How was Thanksgiving? Uh, it was good. I'm just now getting over all the food and getting some energy back, so ready to go. Yes, I know. Yeah, me too. It was the food that did it. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you can see in the Dumpster Fire Project studios tonight, we have a special guest, a guy that I've known for a long time, a good friend of mine. And uh, our guest tonight, we always say this, Murray, but this is going to be a good one, I think. I think we might have finally figured it out. Like, I think we got a good episode tonight, <laughs> right. so yeah. no pressure. Yeah, we want, we want to hear what this is about. But our guest tonight is a retired law enforcement officer, longtime friend of mine, and recent owner of True Brew Coffee in Lovington, New Mexico. Please give it up for Keith Clayton. Keith. All right. The, I thought there'd be like a bunch of applause and stuff. Yeah, we're still working on oh, that. We'll, we'll have that in. <laughs> okay, you'll you'll sink in some applause. Yeah, I mean, I bring yeah. this up. You could see that the equipment that I bring to the table, Murray. You know. I, <sighs> Got to work on him. He's not yeah. putting the money in the pocket. I still, I still got the go. same beat up mic from the band days. I, I was looking yeah. at that. It's like it's in the screen and it's all beat up from all the times we dropped it on the stage. <laughs> I'm surprised it even works, but it is the Sure 57. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's 58. Yeah. Right? This one's 58. Yes. Yep. There you go. Well, let's uh, kick things off. Why don't you tell us about the coffee shop and where we can find you before we get started? Well, we are located in Lovington, New Mexico, and it's True Brew Coffee, but we we definitely serve a lot more than just coffee. In fact, we do like kind of like how Starbucks does with the fraps. We do freshly squeezed lemonade. Those nice. two are probably our biggest sellers more than more than coffee. We do Cokes, of course, and smoothies and all kinds of different stuff. So nice. it's kind of a specialty drink shop, but kind of falls under the all-inclusive title of coffee shop, which is kind of how it is now in the coffee industry. Where's it located at? I haven't been to Lovington in forever. (laughs) It's 105 East Harrison, which is a strange address, but it's on Main Street, which is, you know, there's two main roads in Lovington being a, being a small town. There's Main Street and Avenue D where it, we're on the south end of town or the north end of town, rather at Main Street and Harrison. Awesome. And uh, you guys have a website too, right? We do. It's uh, Lovington, just like the town, LovingtonTrueBrew.com. Of course, I'm not going to do the www because no. even though I'm old, I'm not that old. So just LovingtonTrueBrew.com and and we can even order online and everything. We're, we're very sophisticated. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. And I saw you guys got a pretty nice social media presence too. Yeah, we actually, uh, we had a, a, a local entrepreneur from here in Hobbs actually help us design our logo, build our website, and and she's Jeez. really helped us out. Yeah, so. so you didn't have to figure all that stuff out? No, no, because it, if I was going to, I tried to, we actually tried to design our own logo and it came out, <laughs> it, it we needed to hire someone to design a logo. Yeah. I did the same thing when I was trying to do the the law enforcement training business. I was trying to use like Microsoft Word. Yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> and I showed it to Chris and she's like, no, it's not going to work. I tried to just draw a picture and then have my kids do one and none of it came out It good. didn't work. Yeah. No. Yeah, I did the same thing. I ended up hiring somebody to do mine. Yeah, now my kids are mad at me because they didn't get to design the logo that they came up with. But we try to get close to it. So yeah, well, it hey, is what always, it is. There's always the future. That's right. Well, we know each other because we've. I was a prosecutor and you were a law enforcement officer, yeah. and then you retired, and then I, I find out you've opened a coffee shop. Yep. So I know this This has been a long time in the making. Where Where does it go back to with the coffee shop idea? It probably goes back to about, we were thinking about 2000, <laughs> like we talked about not tapping the table, and then the we're first one do to it. do it was me. Oh, yeah. It's so cool. it probably goes back about 10 years ago. Uh, I was in narcotics and- and well, I think actually at the time when we came up with this, I was still in uniform and my wife and I just wanted to open up a coffee shop. We, now, just to be clear, when you say you were in narcotics, that was as an officer. You weren't that that was prior to law enforcement. I was working <laughs> narcotics, but I think I was yeah. in the uniform division prior to going to the criminal division prior to going. And then I went into the narcotics division. Yes. yes. So, but we came up with an idea that we just really wanted to open a coffee shop. We'd, we'd, my my sister-in-law and my, I mean, my stepsister and my brother-in-law live in Dallas and we just always liked going to the little coffee shops there. And it was just something that we, we really liked about it. And we thought that would, that'd kind of be fun to do. And it kind of has been for the most part. So, but that probably started about 10 years ago at the time, you know, we're an oil industry town, yep. the oil field absolutely took a tank yep. and we decided this is a terrible time to try to do this. And so we kind of put it on the back burner and, and almost really forgot about it just going through life. And then kind of as 
as I retired and went into the oil field, I just didn't care to work in the oil field anymore. And we thought, well, why not now? And of course, as soon as we started, the oil field took another tank and then right. COVID came along. So we're like, maybe we're, we're getting a message here, <laughs> but we, we pressed on and went forward anyway. Yeah. And it's just, you guys just opened up not too long ago. Yeah. About two months ago, right at the, I think it was October 2nd was our very first day open. Yeah. So how did it go with all things the way they are? You know, it, it could have been a whole lot worse than it was. It, yeah. it was, it, it was kind of weird because we, we have a drive through We're the only drive through in town. So that certainly has helped out. But then we had an inside part that was open, and so it was it was crazy hectic when we first opened. Yeah. I, I mean, anytime I know when the Domino's opened up in Lovington, it was the number one Domino's in the nation yes. for like three months. It, it seems like everything that opens up in yeah. Lovington, because it doesn't have much, right. everybody flocks to it, and we were no different in that. that yeah. We were completely overwhelmed, figured out that... We didn't know anything about running a coffee shop and, and <laughs> we had to crash course everything that we did. Nice. So you just, you open up, it's crazy. It is, it, those of you, we got listeners in Michigan, we got listeners down mm-hmm. here and, and hopefully soon all over the place, Murray. Yeah. Um, but one of the Murray. things that's, it's crazy down here. And I think it's partly because it's an oil field town and there's way more people than the infrastructure can handle. But every time something new opens up, it just goes insane. So I can imagine, like, what was, what did it feel like when you first opened well, up? So we're gonna be rich. <laughs> so about nine months ago, we we actually went to a a coffee school basically, and it, and it's it's a it's a coffee business class. They teach you how to make coffees, yeah. but but yeah. more so than that, they teach you the business side of it. And and it's located in the Dallas area, and and it was a really neat school. It really taught us a lot. Now that. They're talking about opening coffee shops in Dallas. We're talking about opening up coffee shops in small town New Mexico. So there, there was a drastic difference, and we knew that. But but if we hadn't gone to that, I think we would have been in even more trouble. So, but we certainly learned that that there were different. I mean, I think we ran out of almost everything on day two because yeah. we just weren't prepared for what was coming. We didn't, you know, without being Starbucks or one of the other big chain restaurants, we couldn't do market research to figure out what everybody wanted. And we just kind of opened the door and went, oh, what does everybody want? And so we, we were really surprised about, or more me than my wife. I think my wife's a lot smarter than me. In fact, I know she is because she's like, I think people want this item. And I'm like, Man, I don't think people get that much. Well, that's about all they got the first day. So, <laughs> so, all out. so I really had to to change my way of thinking. I had to be extremely flexible right out of the gates to understand you know what? The customers wanted something completely different than I expect out of a coffee shop, and we and we and we're not there for me. We're there for them. So we we had to make some a lot of adjustments at the beginning. Yeah. So you went. You mentioned you went to the the coffee shop school or mm-hmm. a barista school kind of thing. Isn't that Murray? We had a guest on here. One of our early guests. Um, he owns a coffee shop in Michigan, and I think they said the same thing, right? That they went to they went like St. Louis or, or something like that. Yeah, I think Minnesota. they went somewhere in Minnesota and it yeah. was more about the coffee than the business. So that's why it was interesting to hear that you went more for the business side where he went more mm-hmm. for, I have no idea how to make any coffee. Uh, how do I, And he's an actual roaster too. So it was really more of a roasting class. Oh, wow. And, and it was great. Like he decided, like they decided to do a coffee shop and they're like, let's do this. And then he said like a month later, he's like quitting his job and they're, they're, they're just doing it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a, that's a bold move. Yeah. So that's another interesting thing. So yeah, after you retired, you went, you were work, basically working kind of in the oil field or something yeah, similar to the, it, right? The natural transaction for, or transition for any police officer or fire department personnel is they go be a safety guy in the oil field because everyone hates the safety guy. Yeah. So cops are like, oh, everybody already hates me anyway. Right. So I'll just, yes. I'll just go on and be the safety guy also <laughs> yeah. and, and make more money doing that. Yeah. But it, it just, you know, the, I can remember growing up here when I was, I think, 14 or 15 and I went, I don't want to work in the oil field. Everything's heavy. Everything's dirty and the hours are terrible. Yeah. That was the only thing I was right about when I was that age that, <laughs> that I learned everything's dirty, everything's heavy and the hours are absolutely terrible. Now the money's good, Yeah, but, and, and it's a very much needed industry and, and, and God bless the people who do it for years and years and, and get up and do that grind because it, it is, it's brutal work. It's brutal, hard work. And so did you, once you got out there and started doing it, did the talk come back about, Hey, this coffee shop thing? Yeah. And, and it, it kind of started with my wife. She, she would go get her nails done by this lady and they were, the lady was always talking about doing her hair, doing her nails. Like we, I wish we had a drive through coffee shop in Lovington. And then 
that kind of got her wheels going again. And, yeah. and here we are about a year and a half later. And it's going good so far. Yeah. So far, so good. Like I said, we've, we've had to make some, some, our sales have been better than I thought they would be. Our projected numbers were higher, but, but also it's been a lot more stress than, than, yeah. you know, the backside of it, the, the running it is, is fun. It, it doesn't, it doesn't seem like work. I mean, I, I love talking to people. I love getting out there and socializing and stuff. It's the back part, the, the making sure your books are, are where they should be, making sure that you're getting your taxes all taken right. care of, making sure you're ordering enough inventory, making sure your scheduled employees can all show up to work. I mean, that that's the kind of stuff you, that you plan for, but you don't really understand how tedious that task ends yeah. up being. Well, that's, so the Murray will probably talk about this. He's got a couple of good questions. I know he's going to ask you, but the reason that we started this podcast and it's been almost a year now since we came up with the idea was the same thing. You saw the stress that I went through at the DA's office and a couple of years ago, I decided it was time for something else <laughs> for me. And, uh, you know, I look at a lot of the local attorneys and I don't want to be, you know, doing tr- jury trials when I'm in my sixties and all that stuff. So I'm looking at long term, and, you know, we talk about on here, let's just do a podcast that follows our story about two guys not knowing what they're doing, trying to build a business. And one of the things that I think we forgot, or at least I did early on, I think Murray was a little bit ahead of me was all the stuff that you don't think about. You're like, I'm going to be an entrepreneur. It's going to be great. I'm going to be sitting on a beach, making a bunch mm-hmm. of money. <laughs> the business is going to pay me. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, not the case always, right? <laughs> no, and, and especially at the beginning, you know, and one of the things that, that I really should have done that I've done now is, and and this just shows you what a what a great town Lovington is. It really is. I mean, it can be it can be ugly at times. It can be a, a bad small town, but for all the bad, there's way more positive. And right. so what I've noticed is as other restaurant owners have come through our drive-thru, and, and I mean, growing up in Lovington, I know them all. They get a hold of me on the side and we're like, hey, have you thought about this? Hey, I want to, and you know, they've been encouraging and, and, and not critical, but actually helpful that I know if they're giving me advice on stuff or if they're saying, hey, this, that, like I had a guy tell me, hey, I've come through and got a drink three times and it's been different every three times. And he goes, it's all been good, but you know, consistency is, is what's going to work for you. And I didn't take that as a criticism at all, but as, as this guy owns a restaurant in Lovington, yeah. that's been very successful. And so I need to listen to that guy and I, I need to make sure that we're consistent in our stuff. And, and that, that, you know, something as small as ingredient consistency, I thought, well, everybody, I'll just show everybody how to do it and then they'll do it. Well, even I'm not consistent all the time. So yeah. that was one of those little tedious things you just don't think about that, right. that consistency of, of half and a half in a coffee matters you know that yeah. needs to be measured it needs to be perfect every time i just throwing it together like the gas station yeah on here, right yeah and that and that's i mean honestly that's how i've always made coffee Man, that looks yeah. about right yeah and <laughs> and i can probably nail it every time but that looks right it looks different right for everybody yeah <laughs> i don't know if i can do a coffee shop murray <laughs> you definitely couldn't <laughs> well you could probably pull it off i know that's one of the you've actually thought about it right a little bit just because I had heard enough stories like this where like there's so much you don't think about, but I also got into this trying to automate it and get rid of any um, variability as much as possible going into it. Um, so I knew starting out what I was going for and how I was going to get there. Uh, but at the same time, I'm a little more different. I'm living in a digital world where, yeah, coffee shop. I probably would have done the exact same thing. Like, all right, well, we make coffee, so we're offering three kinds of coffee, and I'll just hand measure everything and pour it in. Yeah, that doesn't work, right? No, no, it does not work at all. (laughs) That's awesome, though, that you had, like, the connections for the guys to come through and give you constructive criticism and be willing to actually help out and... Oh, I'm telling you that the the other owners in Lovington are amazing on how they help each other out. And I mean, even like, you know, there's another place in town that they primarily serve burgers, but they've kind of gotten into the drink game in, yeah. in recent months. They come through my line every night and get something nice. And, and I mean, it, it's really it seems like that the small businesses are really coming together. And, and I don't know if it's COVID or just this is how Lovington is not owning a business outside of the COVID world. Yeah. But it seems like that all the small businesses make it a point to go to each other's yeah. restaurants or, or stores and try to support each other. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, that's one of the things that we've started to do a little bit with just the podcast the folks that we've had on here is we give them shout outs on social media and everything. Yep. So I think there's probably a, something to be said about that. 
and that may be a, a, a post COVID world. You know, I, right. I hate that term, the new normal. It makes me want to punch people in the yeah. face, but I don't like but, the new normal. Yeah. This <laughs> may be something that maybe people have learned. Hey, my small business takes care of me. They're the ones who sponsor my little league team. They're the ones right. that, yeah. that sponsor the local football team when they need something. That's not your big box stores. Yeah. You know, you never see Walmart on the back of somebody's shirt, you know, when they're, when they're playing in peewee football yeah. or, or peewee soccer. So yeah. I'm glad that people are really, kind of starting to see what small business means to them as soon as it got taken away from them. Right. This is probably the most important question I have for you. It's a very serious question. And I think about <laughs> it uh, based on your background, are you laundering money for the cartel? Not yet. Okay. Not yet. I mean, business is good enough that I haven't had to resort okay, to that. Good. Don't need to, huh? Yeah. That's good. I, I'm not against it, but, <laughs> but I'm just saying I don't need it yet. I like to keep all the options open. Okay, great. Um, I would advise you not to. Okay. So based on our prior dealings, but yeah, just stick with the coffee. That's stuff. right. All right. Um, Murray, I know that you got one that you like to ask. Yeah, I always do, but we almost already talked about it. I mean, you open your yeah. doors and two months in and COVID's hitting, like everything's already hit the wall and you guys adjusted with having a, a, a good opening. So I don't think I need to ask what was your biggest challenge. I'm curious, now that you've seen that, how did you adjust or what tools did you put in place? Like you're talking about the inventory. What what did you do to figure out to start to see those trends and know how much inventory you have to have now? You know, and and kind of going back to your technology for this is is a good point of sale system is amazing for anybody trying to open up a restaurant because our, our point of sale system tracks every single thing that goes out of that window. Every, every single transaction, it tracks it. And so really just being able to gather that data, put it together, and then kind of figure out a game plan from there was instrumental. And in fact, it, it's kind of addicting though, because now I have an app that for my point of sale system, and I'm just staring at it all day, looking at sales, looking at, at labor versus cost of sales and making sure my percentage is where, where it's supposed to be. So, I mean, technology is a game changer. And it's worth the money that those point of sale systems can be costly and they can be expensive, but what, whatever it costs you, find one that's really good because it will it will pay for itself quick and in a hurry. I mean, it, it's helping us keep up with our taxes. Yeah, it's helping us keep track of all that stuff. But but I would say the 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 biggest goal to overcome was we our sales were huge, especially at the beginning. And they're still good, but we were making no money at the beginning. And everything that that. All the money that came in went right back out, and so it was disheartening to to put your put your soul into something and put all your time into it. And me and my wife were there every day from open to close, and and blood, sweat, and tears. And then we were like, "Oh, we we don't have enough money to pay ourselves." Yeah, and that's where the support from the other business owners came through because I I was just honest and told them I don't feel like we're going to ever make any money, and they were like, "Nope, you just put your nose to the grindstone and wait it out, and the money will." eventually start catching up and now we're starting to finally see some returns yeah. from that but i'm like we'll never do as good as we're doing now because it's opening week you know the opening few weeks yeah no one will be as patient as they are now with our mistakes you know th this is our time that that we're gonna make the most money and it all went right back out the window but it all had to do with inventory it all had to do with management of employees and when when you need them and when you don't need them and so really i think that was the biggest thing to overcome was the fact that we thought, oh man, with all this money rolling in, I'll pay off my house next week. And <laughs> it wasn't that at all. It was like, I'm going to have to get another loan to make this month's payment. But but we're finally starting to see some returns. So for nice. for people diving in, they're going to have to just be patient yeah. and, and, and just keep working at it because it's not going to be instant gratification. It's not going to be as soon as you open the doors, all of a sudden all this money floods in. I mean, I'm sure that happens for some people, but I think especially in the restaurant. Criminal defense attorneys, yeah. maybe. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> but <laughs> there's always a business for that. <laughs> but I think for restaurants especially, it's you don't make any money at the beginning. Yeah. That, that you get nothing nothing back. It, everything that comes in goes right back out. And and so, you know, I'm hoping by January and February, we're really seeing our actual returns. Yeah. Because I've got the math down that that I'm like, we're 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 beating our expectations. And so where's the return on that? Did, did I do those figures right? And I just have to trust that we did and that that stuff's going to that stuff's going to happen later on. So the class, the school that you that you went to, I guess, um, did they kind of teach you how to use the technology as far as like, look, it seems like you're just going to go start a business, you sell coffee, you make money, but you got to track all the analytics. 
you know, they they, cover all that stuff. They really didn't cover that stuff very much. They covered more like uh, lease agreements, you know, and and again, for me, that didn't really apply because we don't live in a community rather where you usually lease, do long term leases. I mean, I'm I'm sure some people do, but for us, that wasn't really an option, but it, it was about lease agreements. It was about how to do an interview with your employees, how to put a handbook yeah. together for employees, you know, some HR stuff. And yeah. and so it was, it was monumental good stuff about tracking good inventory, where to set your prices at that kind of stuff. So, I mean, it, it was a massive help, but, but there's always those, I mean, it was only a three day class. So there's only so much they could cover. Right. And, and a day and a half of it was, was teaching you how to make a, make an espresso shot and, yeah. and how to clean the machine. I mean, little stuff like that, that, you know, the, the espresso machines are very expensive. So if you don't know how to clean them and you're not willing to take the time to clean it when the door shut and you're worn out and tired, well, now your, your small vehicle that you purchased yes. is now broke down yeah. and, and you can't do anything with it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and an espresso, a commercial espresso machine is about the cost of a Honda. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, that's I can. That's one of the things you know. I think that a lot of lawyers they they don't do well at a law firm, even though it seems like they should be killing it. Because I don't think they understand how to run the business aspect mm-hmm. of it, and that's something I decided that I was going to really figure out if I ever decided to do a you know private practice type thing again. Is that one of the things that you find find yourself spending uh, probably as much time I, on? As you know, I, I'm I'm married to the best woman in the world and she handles all that stuff, but I can see it in her eyes sometimes that she's like, I'm going to kill you <laughs> and I'm going to shoot this place up yeah. if I don't get these books figured out. Because really, like I said, we were so busy at the beginning, we would take all these bills and paperwork and go, hey, we'll get to that next week. We'll get to that next week. Yeah. Well, it's we finally gotten to the point that, that she's almost caught up with our paperwork where now she's in a flow where it's going every day, but but I, I'm sure she would tell you if she was here. She's actually closing up now. I, I'm sure she would tell you the the financial side of it was brutal. And mm-hmm. and we went. She went to a quick QuickBooks class, which was you know very helpful to go to that class and learn the system. But but it's like anything else. Until you're in the mix, you, you don't really know what you're up against. Right. You know, it's hard to apply stuff you learn in a classroom setting until you're in the real world with it. Yeah. So I, I think that. Now that she's starting to get caught up in our finances and where all these different tax rates and where this goes and where that goes and, oh, I got to, have to pay this and, hey, we have to file for that. I think now that that's finally starting to catch up, it's been, it's finally getting fun again to to be there. Nice. So you're only a couple months in, but uh, this is something Murray likes to ask a lot too. I'm going to steal it from you tonight, Murray. Maybe you can follow up on me. Okay. We talk about when, when Murray and I talk about our stuff, we talk about like some learning lessons, kind of like looking back on it. What would you do differently? So if anybody that's thinking about starting a small business, some stuff that you might've learned in the, the hard way in the beginning. The first thing I would say is hire a full-time accountant. Even if that's not your your goal, you know, even if four months later you want to take a majority of the books over yeah. or at least a bookkeeper, but right out of the gates, have, a, have somebody doing that for you and walking you through the steps of this needs to, I mean, even if something is like we opened up the first day and- and we didn't have any money in the register. Forgot all about it. Just wasn't something we thought about that. Hey, <laughs> people are going to need only. change. <laughs> like, And so luckily we had some money in, in my truck. And so I had to run out there and, and count out money and put it in the register where, and then once we talked to our, to our accountant, they're like, well, the way you're doing your money registers is not right. Like you're making it more difficult on yourself. And so having, having an accountant or a bookkeeper at least at least at the beginning to, to get you over that hump yeah. of the craziness of opening up yeah. where, where they can actually teach you eat that money and just, and just hire out someone to help you out with that, especially right. at the beginning. I'm sure you got to track that stuff in order to figure out if you're making money. Or yeah. Not. Oh, absolutely. And and we just, like I said, we were, we were putting everything to the side. My wife was doing her best to keep up and I'm like, man, I'm going to wash my hands of all the bills because that's math and it's difficult and it's hard. And I don't oh, want to do it. That's something I can't do. I can't do the math, Murray. Yeah, it, it's one of those things. A lot of people get into business. Uh, they'll be like, "Well, I like to drink coffee, so I'll open a coffee shop." But they yeah. don't realize that making the coffee and running a coffee shop are two totally different things. Completely different. And and you know, we've even seen that with some of our workers. Where and most of our workers are high school kids. And and I'll be honest with you, we I cannot believe the good workers that we have nice, it, because. Yeah. Good workers around here are hard to find because right. the cost of living is so much different because you, you have a lot of people that 
and, and I'm not being rude about this, but with just a high school education making six figures because of the because the oil field pays so well to those who are willing to work hard. And so you, why did I go to law school again? Yeah. <laughs> because when it's down, you don't have a job. That's a consistency. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And, and but and so a lot of times our restaurants suffer around here with mm-hmm. with bad workers because you don't have that normal two income families that they need that job. And so, man, sometimes you can get some terrible service around here, but, but all the kids that we have and young men and young ladies at workforce, they are out of control. Good. I mean, they're super nice, super yeah. fun, but, but they're starting to understand. Cause all of them said, I've always wanted to work in a coffee shop. Well, what I think they thought they were going to do is talk to their friends and, yeah. Oh, I think I'll sit down for 10 minutes and have a cup. And it's not that it's chaos right. from open to the end of the day, it's go, go, go. It's, it's everything's happening as fast as we can make it. And, yeah. and, and they, they're in a flow now that they're really good. They've figured out that they can talk and make drinks at the same time. And, and we try to make it fun. It, it when, when you're, when you're in a minimum wage job as a high school kid, it should be fun. Yeah. It shouldn't be a brutal job that you look back and you're like, Oh, I hated working yeah. there. And like, then the manager's like, how come you don't enjoy your job? Why aren't you smiling and treating the customers right? Well, yeah. Cause you're being a butthole to me the whole time. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. yeah. Murray and I used to work at a steakhouse back in uh, Lapeer, Michigan. There was some fun times, but man, I hated the manager. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's like a staple for the big restaurants. Yeah. Uh, me and my wife met at a restaurant and really, Oh, and the manager was terrible. Wow. And, I, I thought you've been a cop since you're like eight years old. <laughs> well, I felt like that, but I actually worked at a restaurant for a little while. Wow. I was a terrible waiter. Which one? Was it at here? Cattle Baron, yeah. Oh, Cattle Baron. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and Ephraim worked there. Ephraim was the bus boy. He was like 14. <laughs> oh, man. That must have been terrible service. Oh, man. The people in Hobbs, the restaurant shouldn't have survived that. <laughs> that's why why they shut down now. Yeah. To do it oh, that's awesome. Murray, what else you got? I've been stealing the mic from you. What's, what's it like up there in Michigan tonight? Uh, it's cold and dark out pretty much <laughs> winter it's almost what tomorrow's december so it should cold start snowing anytime that's the, yeah that's the description of michigan from like november until april <laughs> yes, <'cause> like, <laughs> so, come april the sun will come out and maybe four feet of snow will start melting yeah. off yeah that's about how it goes the good thing is i actually like when it snows up here this time of year because it brightens everything up at night it's not quite as dark it's just got all the lights bouncing off the white snow that's but true well, I know it's a very festive day for Michiganders based on the the sporting news of the weekend. Yeah. Hey, we're not a sports podcast, so we don't need to go into that, but cheers to Patricia getting fired. <laughs> oh, please fire Jim Harbaugh now. Please fire Jim Harbaugh now. <laughs> He's going to end up being the Lions next coach. Calling it right here on episode oh, 25. <laughs> I know it. <laughs> Michigan's been through enough. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so what else? Yeah, I was going to ask Murray. about the, uh, sounds like your drive through That's not typical from the smaller coffee shops but it sounds like that's really working out in your favor especially given the pandemic yeah we we would have been in trouble without the drive through and really that you know when we we actually started the journey our our first plans were a double-sided drive through and no sit down part we were just going to focus on the drive through but then we thought we're going to live in this place that's it's going to be a majority of our lives for at least the next couple of years that that we're going to eat there and sleep there and the only coffee or Coke we're going to have is from the coffee shop. Coca-Cola, by the way. Eric. Okay, good. Okay, I just so wanted to hear it. Yeah, I don't there. want you to, to get a crazy. Yeah. But, and so we decided, you know what? We'll take out one of the drive throughs and make it where you can come in. And, and it's not a huge sit-down area. I mean, I think you could fit, you know, 15 people in there mm-hmm. at the max. But but it's it's what we wanted. It, it's something that's little and it's something that's nice. And and something we learned in our coffee shop was that, that you know, the big part of it, and it kind of goes with, with entrepreneurial stuff is you have to make it your own that that you have to make sure that somebody can't come and build the exact same thing next door to you and do the same thing you're doing and you have no answer for that and so what you have to take your personality to the business that you're gonna that you're gonna be and i mean i i, I certainly don't want to be starbucks i don't want right. to be any place in Hobbs. i don't want to be the other coffee shop in lovington and, and it's actually a really good little coffee shop they have great sandwiches yeah. but but we're not them we want to be our own thing we want to be and, and i'm not going to say something different because how Find much different brand. can you be a specialty drink shop i mean it is what it is you know yeah. I'm, I'm serving lemonade and coffee i'm not i'm not changing the world but we wanted to make sure that 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 the brand was us that it, it represented who me and my wife were and and if not, then you're going to burn out in 
I mean, we would have been burnt out by now if, if it, if it didn't feel like it was ours, it, yeah. if I didn't walk in the door and it feels like an extension of my home that, right. that I feel comfortable there, you know, I have two kids that, that are still in school. And so it's important that when they come down there, cause they come down there with us, that, that they feel comfortable there. And so part, part of being a business owner is, is you have to put your, your personality, your brand onto whatever you're doing, because it's your baby. It's like having your own kid. And so it better mean something to you, Yeah, you know, or, or it's not going to be worth it. The, the long hours, the stress, the heartache of what it is, is not going to be worth it if it's not your personality. Exactly. That's, that's something we've been talking about a lot on yeah. here lately. I love and, that. That's uh, perfect. Yeah. It's a good transition too. You know, one of the themes that we talk about in this podcast is, I guess we're going through that middle life crisis, maybe Murray, it's finally happening, but we start to ask the question of, is there more to life than just, I mean, the dope stuff was fun. You like doing it. I love doing it, but, uh, is there more to, to life than uh, dope? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. There is, you know, one of the, one of the, the big things that we did with our coffee and speaking of this is, is I actually found some coffee beans that I liked better because we don't roast our own. We, we buy out of house, but we found this place called Hope Coffee that, that they actually fund. I, I don't know if you know this, but the coffee industry is a pretty cutthroat industry. The, I've heard, yeah. I mean, they, they buy their beans from third world countries and, yeah. and big companies and, and I don't know which one, so I'm not going to speculate, but they take advantage of those communities. And, and I mean, I'm, I'm, Imagine you could compare it to what they did in Africa with diamonds where, I mean, they basically use slave labor to, to harvest all these beans because they meet, they need so many and, and they can, they're trying to do it as cheap as possible. I mean, corporations are what they are. They're good and, the, and they have some bad sides too, but mm-hmm. that's the bad side of it. And so this company called Hope Coffee is a Christian based company, which I mean, me and my wife were, were very committed to our service to Jesus Christ. And so we wanted to find something and this is kind of part of the personality is, so we, we looked at this place called hope coffee and what they do is they actually fund churches and schools and, and help build communities in these little third world countries and make sure that they're not just going in there and buying out all their stock and being like, thanks, here's 15 bucks for all your hard labor. They, they want to build up these cities and, 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 make sure that these farmers are getting what they yeah. deserve. So that's part of your brand is to, yeah. to make sure that you're doing that with it. It's good. Yeah. Like so that. we, we just want to make sure that, that, you know, I mean, I, our coffee shop ain't going to change the world, but if it changes one little slice of the world, well, then we did something good with yeah. that. Lovington needs stuff like that. Yep. I mean, I guess that's kind of the, the big thing that we talk about in the podcast and is, is there more to life? And you, you, you retire and you find yourself working in the oil field and it's the, the, the prophecy has come true. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe you don't like it. It sounds like you make the switch to starting the business. Has it worked? Have you found meaning in it? Is it something that you would recommend for people that are thinking about doing something like that? Absolutely. Uh, to be a small business owner is, and, and we haven't felt the full rewards of it yet, mm-hmm. but, but just the little glimpses we get here and there, cause it's still, it's still very taxing being in month two. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's still very taxing. It's still very stressful. We still don't have a whole lot figured out, but but the little glimpses we get of, hey, you know what? I, I ran into somebody and they were like, hey, man, that's the best cup of coffee I've had in a long time. You know, and it makes you feel good because nice. it feels yeah. like, you know, it's like if your kid does something good, you know, scores a touchdown in a game that, you know, there's a little bit of pride that comes along with it. You're like, hey, I did that. Like, like that was something that that I helped create. And so I'm pretty happy about that. Yes, it's, it's good. A lot better than the heavy stuff and the long hours and the. Yeah. The and, and, you know, and the oil industry was very good to me. In fact, it, it it's the only reason that I could probably financially even attempt to do this. Yeah. But, but it just, it, you know, it's a world that's not, not built for me. It's not what you want to do yeah. the rest of your life. Yeah. I could not see yeah. myself doing that for 20 years. Right. I know that's, that's kind of, you know, I, I look at practicing law. I love it. I, I always look back at the time when I was the drug prosecutor as the best. Cause yeah. even though it was stressful, had a ton of meaning to it. I loved what we were doing. I loved working with you guys and the team. And once I went on to, you know, chief deputy and being an administrator, just, it wasn't as fun. Yeah. Like the meaning was, was gone to it. And I look at going forward, it's like, do I really want to be you know, doing this the rest of my life? <laughs> and, something and there, you know, there's seasons in all of our lives and, yeah. and that was a great season, but yeah. seasons never last. That's I mean, right. the, the snow always melts even in Michigan. So you, yeah. you got to be ready for the next thing. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't seem like it now, does it, Murray? <laughs> right. It's just coming. But the wind but... never stops blowing here. The wind always blows here. Right. It'll never stop. So Yeah, that's what I tell you about that, Murray. It sucks here. Well, one more time, uh, tell everybody where they can find you guys at, how they can support 
So True Brew, True Brew Coffee in Lovington, New Mexico at Maine and Harrison. Again, you can go to the website, uh, lovingtontruebrew.com, order online, come pick it up. And then when they, when they op- will bring it out to your car, come through the drive through be patient with us. Sometimes <laughs> our line gets caught up and that that's good for us, but not always good for everybody. But I'll say we're, we're pretty quick at getting the line down and, and at nice. pushing drinks out, but man, order online. And then when we open up, man, please come see us, yeah. come in and say hi to us. Yeah. I've always wanted to say this because I've heard it on the radio before. Um, when you go to the coffee shop, give them the code word dumpster fire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let them know the dumpster fire project sent you. There that you would go. be awesome. It might, it might get you something free out of it. Yeah. So we're not going to get paid anything, Murray, but hey, we might have a couple free coffees. That's coming. right. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> well, Murray, anything, any final parting uh, thoughts? No, I think what you're doing is great. It aligns with everything we've talked about on here. And uh, we mentioned this already that we're starting a small little community of just connections. So I think I'm going to put you in contact with the roaster that we had on here who's up here because he has the same vision you do about making sure you're getting it from these communities that are reinvesting in themselves and just making sure it's all fair trade and good things like that. So if nothing else, just have a conversation and you guys can talk about the shared pains that you're going through. (laughs) Absolutely. That, that's yeah. awesome. I'm- he was he was one of our first guests. So and it was I think the first time that we had new equipment. So it, I'll give you the episode. It's funny because you can hear all the equipment crash like in the <laughs> middle of it. Murray's microphone is really screwed up. Like it's just it is an absolute dumpster fire. But I yeah, think that, is. I, I think that was the one where it, it completely cut off too. We lost the internet yeah. connection. We had to Everything, start back yeah. over again. But it, it was fun that you just rolled the punches. Exactly. Well, Keith, can't thank you enough. I know you're only a couple of months into it, so we're going to have to maybe have you back on here. Oh, I would get, love it. Get some updates. Yeah, it. my first podcast, and uh, it was actually kind of fun. Yeah, yeah. that's not so bad. Yeah, You want I mean, to can... end it on any predictions for the next time we have it on here? We can see if you're right or wrong. Oh, man, if I come back and I'm still sane, then I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be pretty happy about that there prediction. There you go. <laughs> All Fair right, enough. Keith. Thanks. Um, everybody, make sure you check them out if you're one of our listeners down here in Southeast New Mexico. Um, I know when things get back to normal again and people are at the courthouse, there'll probably be definitely yeah. an uptick. So check them out. We appreciate it. Thanks for stopping by. And that's it. We're out of time. Murray, take All care, right. buddy. We'll see you next time.